Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what is an ellipse? This is a viewer requested video. Always appreciate those requests. Be sure to leave yours down in the comments. With that said, let's start talking about this very cool shape, the ellipse. In this video, I just want to give you a good idea of what an ellipse is and introduce some related terms. There is a number of different ways that we could define an ellipse, but in this video, we'll be focusing on the definition that I think is most common, most intuitive, and to me, most interesting. Alright, that's enough dilly-dallying. Here is a beautiful example of an ellipse. An ellipse is defined by three things. The first two things are these two points. Each one of these points is called a focus of the ellipse. So together, they are the foci of the ellipse. That's the plural of focus. So again, an ellipse is defined by three things. The first two are the foci. We'll call this focus F1, and we'll call this focus F2. So what's the third thing we need to define an ellipse? The third thing that you need is a distance. Let's say that we pick a distance of 2a, and you'll see why we chose to write the distance as 2a instead of just a in a couple of minutes. But this is the third thing we need to define an ellipse, the distance. This 2a is just some number. Then what's important about this distance? What does it have to do with our ellipse? Well, let's say that we pick a random point on our ellipse. Let's say a point right there. Then we could consider the line segments from this point to the foci of the ellipse. These two line segments here. And let's just call this point P1. All right, this is the part where we learn what's special about this distance. Let's say that we add the lengths of these two line segments. And we can write that like this, the magnitude of the line segment from P1 to F1, written like that. So that's the length of the segment P1, F1. And then to that, we're adding the length of the line segment from P1 to F2. So what do we get if we add the lengths of those two line segments? What we get is this distance that we chose to A. So given two foci and a distance, an ellipse is the set of all points such that for each point, the sum of its distances from each foci is equal to that original given distance. It's kind of similar to what a circle is. You might remember that a circle is a set of all points that have the same distance from a center. In an ellipse, the distance from any point to either of the two foci is not always the same. But if you add up those two distances from each foci, that sum will always be the same. So if this green point that I just drew is P2, then we could write that the length of the line segment P2F1 plus the length of the line segment P2F2 is, of course, equal to 2A. So pick any point you want on an ellipse. If you add up the distances from that point to the two foci of the ellipse, you'll always get the same number. And this isn't just similar to what a circle is, it's actually a generalization of circles. So a circle is actually a special kind of ellipse. A circle is an ellipse whose two foci are the exact same point. You can imagine that if we were to sort of squeeze this ellipse in at the sides until it resembled a circle, these foci would get closer and closer and then finally come together to make that one center of the circle. So a quick recap so far. What we need to define an ellipse is two points called the foci of the ellipse and a distance. Then the ellipse that that information gives us is the set of all points so that for each point, the sum of its distances from the two foci is equal to that original given distance. And a circle is a special type of ellipse. It's an ellipse whose foci are the same exact point. All right, so that's the most important stuff out of the way. The most important thing about this lesson is that I want you to come away understanding what an ellipse is. But now let's talk a little bit about some important related terminology. Consider the line segment that passes through the foci of the ellipse and whose endpoints are both on the ellipse. This very special line segment is called the major axis of the ellipse. 
something very cool about the major axis, guess what its length is. Its length, sure enough, is 2a, the original distance that we used to define the ellipse. And we can talk more about exactly why that's true another time, but it's certainly a beautiful property to keep in mind. Alright, now let's focus on the two foci of the ellipse again, pun completely intended. Consider the midpoint of the line segment connecting the two foci. That midpoint is about right there. So this point is equidistant from F1 and F2. But what's so cool about this point that we just drew? Well, this neat little point is called the center of the ellipse. And the center is also the midpoint of the major axis. So since these two distances are equal, and together they add up to 2a, we know that this distance is a, and this distance is a. Alright, that's neat, but another thing we can consider is the line segment, whose endpoints lie on the ellipse, is perpendicular to the major axis and passes through the center. That's going to be approximately this line segment right here. This line segment is perpendicular to the major axis, its endpoints lie on the ellipse, and it passes through the center. And this brown line segment is called the minor axis. The major axis of an ellipse is always greater than or equal to the minor axis in length. Of course, when the two are equal, what we're looking at is a circle. But if it's not a circle, then the major axis will be greater in length than the minor axis. Alright, there's really just two more quick things we've got to talk about. I'm going to clean up some of this stuff on the side so that we have a little bit more room to work with. Shrink this down, put it over there. If we just consider half of the major axis, we have a special name for this. This is called the semi-major axis. And remember that the semi-major axis, which is half of the major axis, has a length of a. That's half of the distance that we use to define the ellipse. And you might not be surprised to learn that we also have a special name for half of the minor axis. So if we consider this green segment here, this is called the semi-minor axis. The length of the semi-minor axis is usually represented by the variable b. These two measures, a, the length of the semi-major axis, and b, the length of the semi-minor axis, are used in a lot of calculations regarding ellipses, so that's why they are important. And so now you can see, by originally describing our distance as 2a, if we were to go on to write the equation of this ellipse or calculate its perimeter just for a couple of examples, we would get to use this nice variable a. Whereas if we had just defined the distance as d, then this would be 1 half d, which doesn't look quite as nice. So just a quick recap of the second half of things we talked about. The center of an ellipse is the point that's halfway between the two foci. It's also the midpoint of the major axis, and I don't think I said this earlier, but it's also the midpoint of the minor axis. The major axis is the line segment that passes through the two foci and whose endpoints are both on the ellipse. The major axis has a length of 2a. Half of the major axis is called the semi-major axis and has a length of a. The line segment that is perpendicular to the major axis that passes through the center of the ellipse and whose endpoints lie on the ellipse is called the minor axis of the ellipse. Half of the minor axis is called the semi-minor axis, whose length is usually denoted by the variable b. Those two lengths, a and b, are used in a lot of calculations regarding ellipses. And one last thing before we go, just wanted to show you an example of a tall and skinny ellipse, and here are its two foci. Alright, so that's just a whole bunch of stuff about ellipses. One of my old math teachers used to tell me that ovals don't exist, they're just ellipses. I always got a kick out of that. But anyways, I hope this video helped you understand what ellipses are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? You'll have it up here, dear. There's a light where I flow